powerful a woman in the mid 1920s and 30s than the icon Nanny Helen Burroughs. She's ranked up there with Frederick Douglass and W.E.B. Dubois for her age. We have a gentleman with us tonight that will talk of why it's important that we know Nanny Helen Burroughs, especially when we're dealing with issues of race, police brutality, uh, and as well the absence of leadership in America. Uh, he is none other than Colonel James White. He is the founder of Nanny Helen Burroughs Project. You can find it at nburrowsinfo.org, Nanny Helen Burroughs Project on Facebook. You can just type it in and he will come right up. Uh, it is a tremendous honor and pleasure always to have you with us, uh, Colonel White. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, one of the, the biggest issues that's happening in America uh, is the situation that you find throughout the urban centers of people protesting. And originally it started as a protest over police brutality and virtually in 24 hours it moved to racial inequality and the inability of the black man or black woman to represent themselves in this nation. Uh, if you would, could you explain to us why they're not calling on leaders in the black community to defend themselves or to speak eloquently on these particular issues? Well, let me try to speak to that subject by talking a little bit about Nanny Helen Boris, who she was what she did and why maybe we don't hear too much about her. Mm -hmm. uh, Nanny Helen Morris was born in 1879, came to Washington when she was five years old. She passed in 1961. So before I answer your specific question, I want to say a couple of things about her. Yes. I want you to listen to her in 1960. This was her last political action. If the President of the United States cannot enforce the Constitution, we don't want their planks. The Constitution is the floor upon which this nation is built, and the Constitution is stronger than any plank that Kennedy or Nixon can write. We are sick and tired of this campaign hooey. That's Nanny Helen Burroughs in the Pittsburgh Courier in September of 1960. Wow. And what she says is that both of the planks are fakes. Mm -hmm. So Nanny was a very outspoken person. She was in a party, as most blacks and were in those days, the Republican Party, but she was in a party, but not of a party. Mm -hmm. So, Ken, I, I wrote a caution to my talking about Dan Ellen Burr since we last were together. And I want to read that caution because. I think it sets the stage for why maybe people don't listen to her. Yeah. Caution. Nanny Helen Burroughs, 1869-1961, was known to be a truth teller. Her views in her time about the home, church, school, politics, and social issues may apply today in our increasingly mundane and racially divided country. They may be differently stated than yours. She tends to take us out of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's one thing about Nanny. Now having said that, I want to go back to 1934. Speaking at a 1934 NAACP rally where there were 70 people with ropes around their necks 
representing the daily lynchings of Negroes across the country, she thundered to the assembled crowd, there are enough Negroes in Washington to make Pennsylvania Avenue tremble tonight. So you see that Nanny was fighting racism in her days. Mm -hmm. But here's here's the message that states who she was and what she was trying to do. And this is a message that I got out of knowing a lady by the name of Mary Alice Dorsett who transitioned in, in 2017. She's from Tampa, Florida. And she went to the Nan Helen Burroughs School in 1947 to, 40, to 51. And on my website, you will see letters exchanged between Ms. Burroughs and Mary Alice Dorsett. Here is the message. Mary Alice, the people do not apply my teachings. Mm. When I speak, they agree with me, laugh, give me standing ovations and applause, but that's the end of it. Perhaps when I'm dead, if someone will share my teachings with them, they might apply them. If so, they will improve themselves economically, intellectually, politically, and socially, and this will make them first-class citizens. I leave this responsibility to you. Morales Dorset carried this message until she passed, and in 1994, she was honored right there in Washington uh, by the Urban League. Mm. So, having met Ms. Dorset, I found myself taking up the task of trying to talk about the views and visions of Nanny Helen Burroughs. Um, one of the most famous pastors in Washington was uh, uh, Dr. Earl Harrison at Shallow Baptist Church. Yes. Uh, and yes, he was a very close friend of hers. And let me let me tell you how he described her. And I'm going through talking about how people viewed her before I talk specifically about what she said to us. This is Dr. Earl Harrison. She was far above average in quick, intelligent thinking. She was courageous, charming, and dynamic to the point that she was irresistible to the open-minded and contemptible to the jealous and prejudiced. <laughs> okay? She was a firecracker. Now, now, to round that out, Dr. Sandra Washington wrote a book called The Nanny Helen Burroughs Story, and this is significant because it talks about who she was, but it says why she was what she was. Her relationship with God was so strong that it overflowed into every aspect of her life and work, making it difficult to draw clear lines between her thinking on religion, education, political, and social interests. So so there we have Nan Helen Burris, this religious person who talked about all kinds of subjects in ways that uh, were very clear. Mm -hmm. Why don't we hear about her? Because Nanny was very clear about the fact that she felt that the ministers in our community were not properly carrying the message that we needed for our children. In 1928, she wrote, 12 things the Negro must do for himself, 12 things white folks must stop doing. Yeah. But if you go and read those, you're going to see that Nanny was orienting more on what we should do for ourselves. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but I would ask the audience to please Google 12 things the Negro must do for themselves. And you will see Nanny Helen Burroughs, and I've rephrased it saying, 12 things we should teach our children. Exactly. Um, you will see In fact, let me say, just say let me just say this real Colonel folks fall of our problem. Colonel, let me just say this real quick because I don't yeah. want I don't want people going anywhere else to get Nanny Helen Burroughs information. You need to go to the Nellie Helen Burroughs project. Thank you. All right. I why go to the secondary source when you can go to the primary one? The Nanny Thank Helen Burroughs. Thank you, Ken. You're welcome. You need to go to the project. It is something that I'll be pushing through the course of this year because we're going to need it. You're going to need to know it. I've already shared it in our poll. 
It's a PDF that says 12 things the Negro must do for himself. Nanny Hollow Girls, 1928, one of the most powerful lists put together since probably the Ten Commandments, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and if applied rightly, you wouldn't have people running through your neighborhood burning it down. Um, so definitely go to the Nanny Helen Burroughs Project. That's nburroughsinfo.org, nburroughsinfo.org. You can go directly there and get, get this information. And I've already shared in our chat room. And I'm, I'm going, going to command. command. I, I, I normally don't, don't, don't do this, but I'm, I'm going, going to command, command everybody, every single person in the chat roll. Don't send out stuff from all the other sources. Go directly to Nanny Helen Burrell's project, get the information, and then share it. That's and the best way to do I it. If I ask you to have them ask me questions, I will respond to them. He will. They can get to me. He will. And that's one of the most... That's one of the most great things about you. You're, you are just one of the most easy people to talk with, and, and it is done so lightly. Uh, and you can find him at 443-949-9449. That's, that's yeah. pretty easy, 443-949-9449. Uh, and I will be sharing the contact page tonight. But please, don't go to any other source. Because some stuff is just hijacked, and he knows that he's been to the Library of Congress. Some stuff just ain't right. So you want to go directly to the primary source, and that would be Colonel Jim Wyatt. Uh, Colonel Jim, Ken, can I say go right ahead. Saying? Go right ahead, sir. Let me read this, which relates directly to what's going on today. Nanny demands no less is what I entitled this. In quotes, today terrible conditions and serious race tensions and conflicts are tormenting the lives of people in both races in every section of the country nanny helen Burroughs, 1956. i read on at a women's convention the convention which she started in 1902 in 1960 Burroughs declared the following the day of the protest has come out of centuries of suffering, but the weapons of black warfare must not be frustration and hate. Rather, African Americans must use education, improvement of home and family and life and Christian living to achieve their goals. Is this declaration relevant? Today, I ask you. Indeed it is. The one group of people that have not been asked to come to the party have been Christians and have been church leaders and I, I one of the things and this is just a critique and you can chastise me if I'm wrong but the absence of the church from coronavirus to the to the riots that have been going on uh, is a sign that our nation has forgotten God and that it that would be the greatest angst that Nanny Helen Burroughs would have against these movements right now Am I correct in that regard? You correct because in 1920, here's what she said at the National Baptist Convention. And this is why the church doesn't talk about her. A church, 19th Street Baptist Church, where she started, Woman's Day. I can't get a conversation about her going there. Here's an Annie Helen Barnes in 1920. We might as well be frank and face the truth. The majority of our religious leaders have preached too much heaven and too little practical Christian living. Mm. Now, the absorbing task of supplying their personal needs bind leaders to moral, social, and spiritual needs of all people. And there she's saying, you men, you must welcome women into the affairs of the church, into the affairs of the government. So Nanny was very hard about our leaders when she said, we need leaders who can look 25, 50, 100 years in the future and make plans to those ends and we and she chastised our leaders for being too self-indulged to think about the masses and she reminds them that they're up front only because they got there first bonnie williams my executive producer in the chat roll tonight is asking a lot of great questions thank you dave one of her questions is um why don't they do every year on Juneteenth as an annual Pioneer Day for D.C. Uh, a recognition of Nanny Helen Burroughs? 
I can't answer that question. That's very difficult. Uh, one of the things that I've said when I've been asked to speak in many occasions is that it was not my intent to come and give an intellectually satisfying lecture. I wanted to have a discussion. Mm -hmm. about her views and visions for our children, our race, and our country. And uh, occasionally I'm at events, but seldom do I have the opportunity to enter into an interactive discussion about the views and visions of Nana Helen Burroughs. In, in the sense of a discussion, which is quite aloof uh, for many Americans on this particular matter, um, you have individuals that say that rioting is the answer and that defunding the police is the answer. Uh, it will solve our racial issues. Did Nanny Helen girls have issue uh, have answers to solving our racial issues of this day? Yes, she does. Nanny Helen Burroughs fought racism. She fought structural racism, but she sought cooperation. Uh, if you go to on my website, you will see that Nanny felt that uh, we needed to have cooperation. She spoke about the fact that in her book, she wrote one of these things, which she wrote in 1952. In the book, she talks about the meaning of cooperation. And she talks about the fact that we only have these occasional get togethers, but we need to come together and talk about issues across the board. Uh, here's what she said uh, in 1956. Here again, I go back, we have quite enough of the occasional, the planned meetings together on special or high occasions. Mm -hmm. But we have far uh, less united interests to bring us together on common grounds to face our common problems and discuss what we can do together to enlighten all of the people of this nation and enlist them in all of the services that make for the common ground. Now, in regards to this, uh, Tyler Perry uh, received the Country uh, uh, Music Award in 2017. And listen to his comment, national comment. Now it has never been more important that we all come together, find some common ground, spend some time together listening to each other and realize that we're more alike than we're not alike. I've been unsuccessful in getting any kind of traction with Tyler Perry or his organization to process or to proceed with these wonderful comments that he made which follow Nanny Helen Burroughs' view. But their views simply were, you know, we need common ground and uh, we need I think she made a statement about her grandmother that probably suggests what she would say. Nanny says, they would tell me that that old, old lady would say, yes, honey, I was in slavery, but I was just in it. I wasn't even no slave. <laughs> they enslaved my body, but they didn't enslave my mind. Now, can I mention this because the New York Times has a project called uh, 1619 Project. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Woodson, right there in the Woodson Center in Washington, is starting a project called the 1776 Project. And I think we need you, it would be good for you to have those two projects discussed because it gives us a chance to determine whether we're Nanny Helen Burroughs, pride, hope, and determination, or whether we're somebody else where we're victimized. We're, vic we're still victims uh, of slavery. Whereas Nanny says, um, you remember the famous uh, quote, Goddamn America? Yes. Uh, by Reverend Wright, my fraternity brother. Uh, I've written to the PBS who's going to do another black church series, and I said, Yes, that was said, but Nana Helen Burroughs says, God bless America. There you go. The chapter that she writes about putting the lump in the leaven that democracy is a very slow process of improving. She fought racism, but she sought cooperation. That was her. That was her process for making it better for our children. You know, one of the great things I can say about you is on your website in the facts area, and you can go to the Nanny Helen Burroughs Project: Rebuilding a Culture of Character. In the facts area, you break down exactly her thoughts about country, about individual accountability, responsibility, and opportunity, racism, and cooperation. 
Yes, sir. And you do a wondrous job uh, bringing so much information about one woman from various sources directly to one place that people can get it. A conversation has to take place because yeah. uh, on this particular issue there is becoming a great divide between black men and black women in this country as black men are beginning to move towards a conservative Republican Party and black women are staying behind in the more progressive Democrat Party and I know that you don't speak to the politics of it all but Nanny Helen Burroughs if she had a preference today what would her preference be for men and women of color to deal with political, economic, and uh, life issues? Ken, I think the only way that I prefer to ask that question is to use her words that you read from the uh, website, where in the Afro-American, I think it was 1955 or 56, I have a quote on there, and what I do is to say how would we handle the coronavirus today or what is it doing for us and i use nan helen Burr's quote from that article where she says we've been doing a lot of thinking and rethinking about opportunity responsibility and challenge so my answer to your question is look at the political arena decide which party gives opportunity insist on responsibility and tells you to make the challenge and that's where you'll find Nanny Helen Burroughs. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a tremendous pleasure to have Colonel Jim Wyatt with us. He'll be with us on several occasions from this point on and I'm going to see if I can do a long-term video with him uh, just on the history of Nanny Helen Burroughs for not only archival purposes but also uh, for presentation purposes one evening. Um, you have got to hear this woman. It, I mean, my God, she's the woman that I, if I could hear from three people, it would either be Booker T. Washington, Frederick Douglass, or Nanny Helen Burroughs. It would be in those that particular order. Those three people are so relevant for today's message to black America. And Colonel Jim Wyatt, we thank God for what you're doing. You created a nonprofit for the Nanny Helen Burroughs Project. How can people support you? How can people get the information out about well, you? Kenneth, Kenneth, I've been doing this with my own resources. Uh, I'm conti I continue to do that. I have created a nonprofit, and I, I, I think what I'm going, my next goal is to try to create a Nanny Helen Burroughs Alumni Club. Mm -hmm. And I have a young lady who went to the school uh, name is Patricia Williams. Uh, she went to the Summer Institute in the late 60s, and she's come on board to help me, and I'm going to try to put her up to, in the lead to see if she can pull together Nanny Helen Burr's uh, alumni clubs where we can discuss Nanny's views and have these young people take their views across our historically black colleges. And it's at that time that I will try to, to get people to make grants into the uh, nonprofit, but not until I get that on board and let everybody know exactly what we're doing and how we plan to do it. Before you go, I just want to say this in the presence of everyone. Uh, many of you all think lowly of individuals like uh, Carter G. Woodson, uh, Kelly Miller, uh, Nanny Helen Burroughs, because they didn't show up on the local TV movie of the week or whatever. But I want you to hear the words of Dr. King about Nanny Helen Burroughs. I know you all look up to him. I know you all, you know, that's the, that's the first go-to for politicians. Uh, you know, I, Dr. King said, Dr. King. Well, this is what Dr. King said about Nanny Helen Burroughs. Uh, your remarks after my address were magnificent. You said in a few words more than most people could say in hours. It is always a real inspiration to listen to you. If you want to know who your heroes are, ask your heroes who their heroes are. And Kenneth, his words about uh, character followed her words. If you on my website, you can go to YouTube of uh, where the poem "I Am Somebody" is mentioned, and it goes, "I am somebody." 
I am a molder of character in Nanny Boris. That's Nanny in the poem, I Am Somebody, um, that you will see on the, on the website. And he was, in fact, a mentor to Nanny Helen Burrs because uh, she was very close to his family, and she used to write letters saying, How is Junior? <laughs> awesome. You know, what, what is really humbling is when you think of all these great people as they lived in their lives, Booker T. Washington, Frederick Douglass, James Weldon jo uh, Johnson, forgive me, uh, and Carter G. Woodson, they used to all just hang out together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just, just wow. Ken, let me mention this since you mentioned Dr. Woodson. Uh, you know, the National Park Service, in conjunction with the Association of Study of African American Life and History, they're, they're building the Carter G. Woodson Center. And, and I've been fighting for three years uh, to have the, the Fab Four of Education, Lucy Lady, Mary McLeod Bethune, Charlotte Hawkins Brown, and Nanny Helen Boris, who started these fabulous schools. We call them women, women builders, uh, to have them recognized. And, and in the December 15th meeting, they acknowledged that they're gonna recognize these women for the contributions they made because, because Nanny Helen Boris insisted that the Black History books written by Carter G. Woodson be used to teach uh, uh, students uh, in her school. Here's what he said, if you have a moment. Yes, go right um, here. I remember Dr. Woodson's response to a lady to whom he appealed for a contribution to support the school. She refused, saying, I cannot give you anything for Nanny Helen Burroughs School because she is merely duplicating what we're doing in the public schools. You are very much in the era, Dr. Woodson uh, said to the misinformed lady. At the National Training School, Nanny Helen Burrs is doing a work which neither the public schools nor the university can do. The other schools have their spheres, and the National Training School has its special sphere. So Nanny was using his books. Uh, Lucy Laney was saying uh, in her school, uh, uh, we only, uh, God only has boys and girls out of which to make men and women. Uh, Charlotte Hawkins Brown was saying, don't let the failures of society keep you from reaching your full potential. Grandma Charles was saying, I, I pray that my people learn to have good relations with all people. So these are the women builders that I don't understand why the women of today are not borrowing these women as they are pointed out so vividly in Dr. Betty Collier's Thomas's book, Jesus, Jobs, and, and Justice. Read that book. Read about our black women. Read what they gave to us and why we need them at this time because they represent the basis of the home. And that's where we need help. In the home. Ladies and gentlemen, a tremendous man uh, and one I respect with great reverence. Uh, Colonel Jim Wyatt. This would not be the last time we have him on our program. This would be not the last time we see him this year. This is an election year. It's very important for people to make conscious decisions, not emotional ones. And you can make a conscious decision by supporting the Nanny Helen Burroughs Project. You can find them on DuckDuckGo. Uh, just type in Nanny Helen Burroughs Project or Colonel James Wyatt, and that will pop up for you immediately. Find out a way that you can support Colonel James Wyatt. It's amazing. 87 years old. I never thought you look so young, man. You really do. <laughs> thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. We thank you so much for all that you do. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be back with more of the best in urban conservative talk. We are a republic, not a democracy ruled by the mob. We are the best in urban conservative news, talk, and movies. We are the exceptional conservative show.com, T E C N TV. We'll be right back.